In this video, we will take a look at using the Datasheet view to work with a list or library. The Datasheet view provides an Excel-like environment for viewing and editing data. It displays the contents of a list or document library in a grid of rows and columns. As you will see in the demonstration, you can add and edit rows and columns, apply filters, sort orders, and more. First, we'll see how Datasheet View provides an easy way to edit the metadata of multiple items in a list without having to go to each item's edit window separately to make the changes. In a library, this can be especially useful for updating metadata after performing a multiple file upload. In this library, a document type column was added after some documents were already uploaded. To add a document type to one of the documents, I would need to individually select a document, Go to the drop-down list and select to edit the properties. Then I can select the document type from the drop-down and choose Save. So now this has a document type. I would need to repeat that same step for each individual document. We can accomplish this task quicker by using the Datasheet view. So I'll click on the Library tab and then click on the Datasheet view button. To change the document type in this view, I don't need to open the Properties window for each document in the list. One option is to edit directly in this cell. The second document is a manual, so I can click in this cell. It provides me with the drop-down in the Choices, and I'll select Manual. Another option is to use Copy and Paste. I can copy the document type from one cell to other cells. There are three training outlines in this list as indicated by the OL at the end of their names. I already have the document type selected for the first outline, so I will copy it to the other two outline documents using the right-click menu. So I'll right-click on the outline document type, select Copy, and then I'll paste to the other two outline documents. I can also use Autofill just like in Excel. Notice when I click in a cell, the cell selector has the Autofill box in the lower right corner. To demonstrate using this, I will first sort the documents by file type, and now all of the presentation files are grouped together. I'll select the document type as presentation for the first document in that group, and notice the autofill is not visible since I just changed this cell, so I need to first click in another cell, and then click back on the cell I want to autofill from, and now the autofill handle is available at the bottom right. So now I just place my mouse over the autofill to get the crosshair, press and hold down the mouse button, and drag. The remaining documents here are manual, so I'll just quickly use the copy and paste to fill in the rest of the document types. And use autofill for the rest here. Then to switch back to standard view, click on the Standard View button. For this next demonstration, I'm going to switch to a different list on the accounting site. And open a Vendors list. And next we'll take a look at adding items to a list using the Datasheet view. One way is to click on the New Row button which takes the cursor down to the next available row for adding a new item. And you can add the item here just as you would in an Excel file or a table in Access. So I've finished entering this new row here. Another common practice is to copy the rows from an Excel worksheet if that's where they reside. So I will be copying rows from this Excel file containing vendor information. And these last three rows do not exist in the SharePoint list. So I'm going to copy these last three rows here, select them, and copy. Then I'll go to the SharePoint list. Then I'll click in the new item row marked by the asterisk. And I can right click and choose paste. And to paste in those three rows from the Excel file. You just want to make sure that the columns are in the same order in the worksheet as in the list in SharePoint. Now I'll open one last list here called Payables. Again, I'll switch over to the Datasheet view. 
Something else you can do here in Data Sheet View very easily is rearrange the order of the columns. And in this example, I'm going to move the vendor column to the far right. So I click on the column heading for vendor and then drag the mouse till I see that vertical gray line all the way to the far right. And when I let go, it repositions it at the end here. In Data Sheet View, you can also show a totals row easily using the Show Totals button. It adds another row at the bottom of the list. When you click in a cell in the total row below the column, it gives you a drop down and then choices of what type of total you would like displayed, whether it's a sum, an average, or a count. The choices in this list are going to change depending on the content of the column, whether it's numeric or non-numeric. So this is a numeric column, so I get a lot of choices. If I come over here to a text column, I get one choice, which is just to count the items in the column. So in this amount column, I'm going to calculate a sum. And just like in Excel, the pound signs indicate the column is not wide enough to show the value. So I'm able to widen the column just like you do in Excel by using the border here between the columns to drag and adjust the column width. Then I'll switch back to the standard view. And you can see the changes were maintained with the vendor column moved over to the far right and the total at the top of the amount column. In standard view, totals will always appear at the top right below the column heading section rather than at the bottom like they do in the data sheet view. So I'll switch back to data sheet view one last time here. Another button that you have at the top here is to show the task pane. This opens up a pane on the right hand side. This provides additional functionality for working with the items in the data sheet. There are buttons at the top for cut, copy, and paste. There's a clear filter button if you had previously filtered any of the columns. So for example, if I wanted to filter the list on a particular vendor, click the drop down here for the column heading and select a particular vendor. It narrows down the list, filters it just for that vendor. And one way to bring back all the items in the list, I click on the clear filter button. In the office link section are options to work with the list in Excel and Access. You can export the list into Access, create a report in Access, query the list with Excel, print with Excel, chart with Excel, and so on. So this provides several options for analyzing the data in the list using Excel or Access. If you want to remove the task pane, just click on the button and it toggles it off. Same with the totals. If you no longer want the total row to display, just click the button and it toggles that off. I return to the standard view and the sum for the amount column is gone. So as you saw in this demonstration, working in Datasheet View lets you modify the list content quickly and provides several features to view and analyze the data with Excel and Access.